guys can do better than that. Praise God. 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 There is no one like him. 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 There is no one like God. There is no one like God. He is holy, 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 holy. He is holy, 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 holy. Yes. Oh, my heart praises you, Lord. My heart praises you, Lord. My heart praises you, Lord. Don't get tired. Don't get tired of worshiping him. Don't get tired of lifting him up, his name up on high. Don't get tired of letting him know what he means to you. Don't get tired of it. Don't get tired of it. Don't get tired of it. put in my in my spirit that we we don't understand what the worship song said about about his breath in our lungs we don't get it we, we really don't get it we don't get it because we've had it for so long we've had it for so long we take it for granted I'm supposed to breathe in and out we just breathe in, we breathe out, and everything is just normal. It's normal. It's what we do. It's what we've always done since the moment that we were born. So we don't know any different. We don't know what, it, what it's like to not breathe. And just understanding, just understanding that without his breath in our lungs, there would be no us. Like we wouldn't be here right now. You wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for his breath in your lungs. So we talk about his breath in our lungs and then we praise him with that very same breath that he gave to us. So when we sit there, when we stand there and we don't worship him, we don't praise him, we don't lift his name up on high, we're taking him for granted. We're taking the breath that he gave to us for granted. And I just, I just, I just think about that because when you no longer have it, then you want it. When you don't have any more of that breath, you wish you had it. But I'm going to choose to praise him while I still have it. I'm going to choose to lift his name up on high while I still have it. While I can still talk, I'm going to use this, this right here to lift his name up on high. I'm going to do that. That's the choice you got to make. So what's the choice you make tonight? Are you going to use what he gave to you? Breath. If you're here, you have that breath. If you're watching online, you have that breath. You have the breath. You have it. You have it. And that's all he wants. That's all he wants. He just wants your praise. He just wants your worship. That's what he wants from you. So will you give that to him? He gives you the breath. He gives you the breath. Will you give him the praise? He gives you that. Will you give him the praise? Once we've had something for so long, and that's all we know, we don't know what it's like to not have it. The rich man doesn't know what it's like to be poor. He's never been poor. See what I'm saying? 
once you've had something for so long, you don't know what it's like not to have it. And when you lose it, if you gain it back, it's that much better. If you've ever drowned or, or, or been in a position where you're drowning or you're out of breath or you can't breathe, it could be an allergic reaction, it could be anything, and your throat closes up, you value that next breath because now you have it. So when the worship song says, it's your breath in our lungs, it's his breath in our lungs. And you still have that breath because it's allowing you to still have that breath. There'll come a point in time where I won't have breath anymore. There'll come a point in time where you won't have breath anymore. There will come a point in time where, where we're not going to have that and we're going to say, ah. your breath in our lungs and we pour out our praise to you Father we lift your name up on high Father we are here before you Lord just really seeking more of your face Father Father we want more of you and less of us Father we recognize understand that we are nothing without you Father, you are the reason for our existence, Lord. Father, right now, as we have come into your presence, we ask that your word is the one that's spoken here tonight. Father, I get out of the way, Lord, so that it may be your word through your Holy Spirit. Father, we ask you that hearts are open tonight. We ask, Father, the soil was set with the worship. That now the seed of your word may be inserted into that soil. And you, Lord, are the one who waters. Father, I recognize that I am nothing without you. But it's your will for us to be here tonight. We thank you, Lord. We lift the name up on high. We thank you for your breath. We thank you for your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. You guys may be seated. As I'm reading the word of God, and I love reading about Jesus, and I, and I love reading about Jesus because everything that Jesus did was teach. It didn't matter. Everything that he did was teach. He would just teach on everything. And, and, and I read everything that Jesus said, and I'm just amazed at, at the wisdom that Jesus just gives to us by reading his word. In the book of, of Matthew, he is, he, you know, he's, he's talking and he's giving all these lessons, right? He gives lesson after lesson after lesson after lesson. And I just wonder, what more did he say? You know, because we get two or three verses of a certain lesson, but I know that Jesus, he, he, went, he went in. I also know that Matthew was probably like, hold on, Jesus, wait, 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 slow down, Jesus. And then we got what we got, but I just wonder what was it like to be there and receive the bread of life from life himself. I wonder. He talks about in, in the book of Matthew 6, he, he's talking about how we shouldn't worry. We shouldn't be anxious. And one of the things that we have in this world is we live in a world of anxiety. There's always anxiety coming in from front, left, center. There's always anxiety coming. There's always anxiety moving. Every single thing is going to give us some sort of anxiety. And I can't help but wonder, what if? What if we lived a life with no anxiety? What if we believed what Jesus said? 
What if when he said, when he says, don't be anxious about anything. Don't, don't think about what you're going to eat. Don't think about what you're going to wear. Don't think about any of that stuff. I got it. What if we gave in to that? What if we said, you do, you got it. What if? He said, instead of doing that, instead of worrying, instead of being anxious, seek first the kingdom of God. So Jesus says, instead of worrying, change your tune. And instead of doing that, seek first the kingdom of God. He, he's not telling you to seek it. He's telling you to seek it first. He's not telling you to go after it. He's saying to go after it first. He says, seek the kingdom of God first and and all these things, all these things, what are all these things? What are you anxious about? What are you anxious about? All these things, they're going to be added on to you. So he finishes teaching that. Then he goes into other teachings. He, he tells them, well, you know, you shouldn't be judging. And that's obviously in context. He's talking about how, you know, you should ask and you shall be given. He's talking about the golden rule. He's talking about all these teachings. And we see that and we're like, okay, yeah, okay, I got that one. Okay, I got that one. Okay, I got that one. And then we arrive at the last thing he said. He says, you could be crying to me saying, Lord, Lord. In your name we did this. In your name we did that. We casted out demons. We healed the sick. We did everything you said in your name. He says, get away from me. I, 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 I don't know who you are. When you see that and it says, Lord, Lord, that means they're recognizing his authority. So it's not a foreign person saying, Lord, Lord. It's someone who recognizes him as Lord, as Jesus, as the Messiah saying, Lord, Lord. He goes through all that, and then afterwards, he talks to them about the foundation. When I heard that last worship, I said, wow, God is good. Not that I didn't know that. But I just said, wow, the foundation. And it's amazing just to know how God operates. I want you guys to imagine something real quickly. Imagine a beautiful home, right? So if you want to close your eyes, you may. And imagine a beautiful home, a gorgeous home. And, and gorgeous means different things to different people. So what does that mean to you? Think about your dream home, your forever home, that home that you say, you know what? If God gives me this home, I'm, not, I'm never moving. Think about that home. One of the things that real estate always talks about is location, location, location. I'm not sure if you've ever heard that before. But it isn't about the home. It's about where the home is. So it could be a beautiful home, but if it's in the wrong neighborhood, it loses value. It could be a raggedy home, but if it's in the right neighborhood, it goes up in value. So after Jesus talks to them about all these things, he says, you got to worry about the location. And I was like, oh, okay, uh, um, okay, okay. So let's go to the book of Matthew 7, 24. Jesus says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them. Let me pause real quick. It isn't enough to hear. It isn't enough to listen. It isn't enough to know. A lot of the people in the world are chasing knowledge. It isn't enough. If you don't do, what good is knowledge? So Jesus is saying, well, the first thing you got to do is know. You got to listen. The second thing you got to do is do them. So he says, 
Whoever hears these sayings of mine, whoever hears these lessons of mine, whoever hears these teachings of mine, whoever listens to what I'm saying and does them, put them into practice, I will liken him. It'll be like, it'll be such as, it'll be compared to a man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine, they both heard it. Did you catch that? They both heard it. It isn't about hearing. Hearing isn't enough. So he, the Bible says that faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. But then somewhere else it tells you that faith without what? Actions without works is dead. So Jesus is saying, yes, you got to hear. Yes, you got to listen. Yes. But if you do, you're going to end up here. If you do not, you're going to end up here. And does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house. And it fell. And great. Great was its fall. Tell somebody around you, I am the house. You got to tell somebody else, I am the house. When I'm reading this, I'm just thinking to myself, as probably you have as well, if you've read this, who in the right man is gonna in the right mind is going to build a house in sand? Think about it. It doesn't make sense. I read that I'm like, dude, come on, like who? Jesus, like Jesus, come on. Right? It's one of those because who is going to do that? Who's gonna say, you know what? No, mm -mm. I'm gonna forego perfectly fine foundation. I'm gonna go to the beach. I'm, I don't mean I don't mean I don't mean beachfront property, okay? I mean on the beach. Like when we say on the beach, we don't mean on the beach, right? On the beach is on the sand. So Jesus is saying, if you have a choice, choose right. And I'm just thinking to myself, why wouldn't anybody? Why wouldn't anybody pick the right foundation? And, and, I'm, and I'm reading and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm asking questions and I'm asking the word. I'm like, I'm like the Bible is like, why? What's going on here? When I think about sand, and again, they, they were in, in a place where there was desert around, right? So you look at that and in the desert, what is very common is that sand is going to shape. It's going to shape shift, what I should say. It's going to shift. So you could see a shape today, you go back tomorrow, and wherever the wind took that, that's what you see now. So it is indeed foolish to try to build something where the foundation is always moving. When I think about sand, I think that sand, really, when you think about it, has no master. Sand has no master. There's no consistency to sand. There's no constant to sand. The only thing that's constant is that it isn't constant. It's always moving. You can't build anything worthwhile with sand. I always think about little sand castles. You make one, and the, the, you know, the water comes, it's gone. It's like, okay, all that work. Because sand does what sand is supposed to do. So I wanted to understand what was Jesus talking about? Like, what is Jesus referring to? Because I know 
I know that if he had to choose, anyone in the right mind would choose to build a firm foundation. But you just said you are the house. You are the house. So if I'm the house, where am I building my foundation? Where am I building my foundation? So, so is, it, is it logical to think about this? Could we understand by what Jesus is saying that spiritually there is sand foundation and then there is rock foundation? And that's where it is. Where we got to understand that the sand, the sand is going to shape shift. The sand is going to change. The sand is here today, not here tomorrow. Sand has no master. Sand is always going to be different. How many people do you know that their foundation is always shaky? See, Jesus didn't refer to the house. Jesus doesn't care about the house. The house is the house. And you are the house. He doesn't care about the house. He cares about what the house is standing on. He doesn't care about the size of your house. He cares about where you built it. Location, location, location. So we see, we see that Jesus, he's talking to them in a way that they're going to understand. He's saying, would you ever do this? Like, no, no, I would never build on the sand. Yet why are so many people doing it? Why are so many people putting so much faith in sand? Why are so many people worried about the house but not worried about the structure? Not worried about the foundation? And then I started just, just understanding. And, and the world, the world wants you to focus on the house. The world was the house. The world wants me to change. The world wants me to get better. The world wants me to improve. The world wants me to be cuter. The world wants me to get better. The world wants me to be in a certain shape. As long as I don't look at where I'm standing. See, God doesn't care about what I look like. God doesn't care about my improvements. God doesn't care about anything like that. He cares about where I'm standing on. Because the wind is going to come. The floods are going to come. See, if you've ever had problems, if you've ever had issues, if you've ever had circumstances, where you're standing on is the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter how cute you are. It doesn't matter how much money you got. It doesn't matter your possession. It doesn't matter your stature. None of that matters. Either you go to God or who do you go to? So God says, if you have to choose, choose me. I understood. I understood that when I was in the world, I was, I was driven by looks. I was driven by position. I was driven by looking a certain way, by having a certain status, by being a certain. I, that's, that was the one thing that was driving me was that. Never the foundation. Because if the enemy could keep you focused on that, if the enemy could keep you focused on this up here, then you don't focus on that down there. So the Bible says that when the, when the wind came, have you ever been hit by a tornado in your life? That you don't know what's happening. Your life is upside down. You don't know what's going on. You don't know anything. It's like by the time you open up your eyes, you're upside down. The Bible says that it matters where you're standing. Have you ever been hit with a flood? Have you ever been hit with a flood? That you feel like you're gasping for air. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't know who, who could help you. You don't know anything. It's a flood. And you're like, what do I do? The Lord tells you, 
It isn't about what you do. It's about where you're standing on. We look at everything that happens in our lives. And I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you guys. But I've been hit with some stuff in my life. And there's stuff when I was standing on, on, on the sand that it, it, it's, there's, there's, there's no bottom. When you don't have a foundation, there's no bottom. You're there and you get hit left and right. You're getting sucker punched. You, stuff is just happening to you and you're like, Lord, what's happening? And a lot of the times you wish, you just wish you were standing on the rock. You just wish you were standing on the, on the rock because one thing that I know is that the attacks are still going to come. The tornado is still going to come. The flood is still going to come. But what the Bible tells me is when, when the flood comes, it won't drag me away. Is when, when the tornado comes, I'm still going to be standing. Is that when everything happens, I'm still going to be upright. I'm still going to be looking the right way. I'm still going to be looking at Jesus. I'm still going to be standing. Because my foundation, my foundation is different. But why? Why would we build on sand? Think about that. Why would, why would, if this is, if this is the right place to be, why would we be over there? And the answer is, because there's a devil that wants you to focus on being over here. Since the beginning of the Bible, the devil wanted us to stand over here. He did, did God really say that? That's what the serpent told Eve. Did God really say that? Stand over here. If you eat of the fruit, you'll be like God. Stand on the sand. After all, it's about you. It's not about what you're standing on. You go through the Bible and it's God trying to convince us one thing after another, after another God telling you, no. It's not about you. It's about what you're standing on. And we go through the motions and we don't realize that I should be focused on my foundation. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 6. Jesus says, but why? This is the same event told from a different perspective. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? Why? So why are you going to call me this and you're not going to do what I tell you to do? If I just taught you all of this, but you're still going to choose you, then why call me Lord, Lord? You're not standing on me. You're not standing on the rock. You words have no power. You call me Lord, Lord. Then he says, whoever comes to me and hears my saying and does them. Again, and does them. It isn't enough to know. We've got to do what we know. He says, it's like a man building a house. Who dug deep. So now we get a different interpretation. Now we get a different understanding. We get another angle, a different angle. He says, that man dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. So now we're understanding. We're understanding that if you want to stand on Jesus, you got to put in work. See, the world tells you, the world tells you to do what you want, when you want, with whoever you want, however you want. That's what the world tells you. Do you. Or you don't like it, then don't do it. I know people, they don't, go, they don't go to church, and the reason why they don't go to church is because they can't identify. So now you want the word to submit to you, not you submit to the word. Now you want God to be your own personal genie. 
instead of you having to see God. Now you want for God to conform to you instead of you saying, Lord, here I am. So what the Bible is saying is that you, you got to dig. You got to put in work. You got to go through it. The things that you don't want to do, but the word tells you that you should do, you got to do them. So he's saying, he's like a man building a house who dug deep. He didn't, he, he didn't just dig. He dug deep because the foundation is deep. Dug deep and then laid the foundation on the rock. He laid the foundation on the rock. See, that's, that's where I want to be. I just want to be here. I know stuff is going to come. I know stuff is going to hit. I know problems are coming. I know situations are coming. I know they're coming. I just don't want to be swept away. The Bible says, when the flood arose, when the flood came and it was beating against your house, Right? Trying to take it away. Trying to sweep it away. And you're just standing there. See, I have, the, I, I have the certainty that if I'm standing on the rock, because I laid the foundation, I laid the foundation, because I laid the foundation, I won't be swept away. The stream beat vehemently. That means it was just relentless. Have you ever gone some, through something in your life that is just relentless? It just won't stop. It just keeps on going. And it keeps on going. And it wants to see you down. And it wants to see you dead. And it just keeps on going. And then someone looks at you and says, how are you still standing? How are you still up? It's unexplainable. When you don't understand the word. Because yes, it should have knocked you out. Yes, it should have knocked you down. Yes, it should have taken you out. But because you're standing on the rock. Because your foundation is on the rock. Because you are standing on the everlasting word of God. It can't move you. What are you standing on? It could not shake it. It could not shake it. You ever been through a problem and, and people just ask you, they just say, how are you so calm? Like, how are you so chilling? Like, well, like what's up? Like, you know, like, like why? This is, this is, something's not adding up. It's not supposed to add up. I'm not supposed to be standing. You understand? I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be breathing. I'm not supposed to. But God's grace, God's grace allows me to stand. God's grace, God's grace allows me to live. So yes, I am standing because I'm standing on the rock. And I chose to focus on me and on my looks and on my situation and on my circumstance, I'd be standing on sand. I would have been swept away. There are people in your situation that don't have Jesus. There are people going through the same exact thing you're going through that they don't have the rock. There are people that are going through that same exact thing you're going through they're getting swept away. Why? They're not standing on the rock. But he, so now we take a different direction. He chose to dig and dig and dig until he couldn't dig no more. He's like, okay, solid ground. All right, Lord, I'm here. Isn't that how it is? Isn't that how it is when, when, when you come into the faith? You got to dig and you got to dig. 
And Lord, take this away from me. And Lord, take that away from me. And Lord, I want to change. And Lord, I want to be different. And Lord, look at my spouse. And Lord, look at my kids. And Lord, look at this. And Lord, look at my job. And Lord, look at all this. And you're just digging. And you're digging. And you're digging. Until you get to a point that Okay. Okay. I'm on the rock. So now all those things, all those things can't move you. An attack from your kids, through your kids, I should say, can't move you. An attack through your spouse can't move you. An attack through your job can't move you. A housing attack can't move you. Nothing can move you because now I'm on the rock. I chose to be on the rock. But he, but he who heard, just like you heard, and did nothing. He didn't dig. He didn't want to change. He just wanted to look like he changed. He just wanted to look like he was different. That was me at one point in time. I was trying to do God's, God's job. I was trying to change myself. I wasn't letting God do what he was going to do. And Jesus says, but he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation. He built it on sand. He built it on the top. He didn't dig. He just looked the same. The rock when you look at the rock, I look at Jesus. Jesus was the same yesterday, the same today, will be the same tomorrow. He doesn't change. So I'm not worried about what comes. I'm not worried about the attacks because I'm standing on the rock. I'm not worried about what the devil's going to throw my way because I'm standing on the rock. Now the same stream is coming. The same flood is coming. And now it immediately fell. Because it was it had no foundation. You look at the world and in the world there's, there's no requirements. It doesn't matter. You do you. You want to be this? Fine, be it. You want to be that? Fine, be it. You want to do this? Fine, do it. As long as you as long as it doesn't affect me, you're good. Do you. Whatever you want is cool. You want to go to the left, go to the left. You want to go to the right, go to the right. It doesn't matter. You want to go against the word of God? Well, it is what it is. Who cares? But then when the problems come and you want to stand, you can't stand because you built on the sand. You built on the sand. So when you're built on the sand, you got to make a decision. Either you stay on the sand when the flood comes, when the tornado comes, when the problems come. You have nowhere to go. You have no foundation. Or you could choose to pick up your cross. See, the difference between the sand and stand is that T. You got to pick up your cross. You got to pick up the cross. And you got to say, no matter what comes, I'm going to stand on the rock. No matter what, what comes to my, to, to my life, I choose. I choose or I stand. See, it isn't about the house. It isn't about you. It isn't about me. It isn't about them. It's about where we stand. It's about the foundation. It's about what, where we choose to stand. It, you can't call on Jesus if you're not standing on Jesus. That's why he's saying, whoever hears but does not do, you're not standing on me. You can't call on me if, if, if you don't know me. So I always understood. I don't have it figured out what God does. I don't know what's, what's going to come next, but God does. The world tells you you got to have it all figured out. And I'm a planner. I want to have a one-year plan, a five-year plan, a ten-year game plan. I want, to, I want to have it all. And then I want a strategy. Have you ever wondered why God doesn't show you the whole thing? 
Have you ever wondered why God doesn't show you the whole thing? Because if he shows it to you, you don't need faith. If he shows it to you, you will not go through the process. Because it's in the process. The challenges are in the process. Your choice has to be, I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to stand here. I'm going to dig. And I'm going to dig. And I'm going to get to the point where I need to get to. I'm going to get to bedrock. I'm going to get to the rock. And when I get to the rock, Lord, I'm going to plant my feet firmly in the rock. And when the wind blows, when the flood comes, yeah, he's going to twist me. Yeah, he's going to bend me. Yeah, he's going to hurt me. But I'm not moving. It's not going to kill me. It's not going to take me out. And that's the choice that we got to make. That's the choice that Jesus gave them. Jesus said, look, you're hearing this. Where well, your choice is, are you going to be there or are you going to be here? That's your choice. So I made a choice. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be standing for you to tell me, hey, you look good. Everything looks nice. Everything is okay because I'm focused on me. But then when the wind comes, when the flood, when the flood comes, I have nowhere to turn because I focus on the house. Jesus is saying, don't focus on the house. Focus on me. Allow me to be your foundation. Allow me to be your rock. Allow me to be where you stand on. Allow me to be the, the, the very thing that's going to sustain you. Do you sustain by where you stand on? How can you stand on something that, sh that, sh that, that the, very, the very shape shifts with the wind? So what decision do you make? What decision do you make? That's why I love that worship. I love that worship because I choose to stand on the rock. I choose to stand on the rock and it's not going to be pretty. G guess what? The wind is going to blow the same. The water is going to rise up the same. The flood is going to come the same. But spiritually, I'm standing on the rock. I'm standing on the rock. Where are you standing? Where are you standing? When the wind comes, when the flood comes, when the problems come, when your spouse is acting up, when your kids are acting up, when the job, you just want to punch somebody. Can we be real? When things are coming at you that you don't even know what to do or how to do it, where are you standing? Are you standing on the rock? Are you standing on the rock? I'm going to invite you to come up. If your foundation hasn't been Jesus, you come to church, you're hearing, but you're not doing. You hear the word, but you're not acting on the word. If that's you, Come to the front. If your foundation is shaky, 